note three in our series of notes on importing data into ServiceNow. And in this note, um, uh, I focused on um, the staging table, the import set table that uh, ServiceNow creates as part of the import process. If you have been following along in the series, you'll remember that in the last note, um, we talked about the creation of a data source. We went in and we created a data source record. Um, that record is used by ServiceNow to understand uh, the source that we will be connecting to for the import. Um, we tell it in the data source record what data we would like for it to pull. And then we also designate um, some parameters for the creation of the staging table, uh, including what we'd like that table named and the label that we would like set to that table. At this point, um, we are ready to give that uh, data source a test drive, um, see that the connection works, see that uh, ServiceNow creates the um, staging table, and that the data gets loaded into the staging table. So again, we're going to pop back into our uh, personal developer instance that I've got set here, and we're going to review real quickly what we did in the last note. So uh, we created a data source record, and I know those are stored in the sys data source table. So I'm going to enter sys data source dot list. Anytime you want to see the contents of a table, you can do the table name dot list in the application navigator filter. Um, here is our import, or our, sorry, our data source that we created in the last note. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and point out a couple of things for us to take a look at and remember these two attributes right here specified for the import set table, and that's the that's the staging table. This is the label we're using, test import, and this is the table name. The actual database table name is u underscore test underscore import. I mentioned in the last note that uh, ServiceNow automatically creates that staging table as part of the uh, import process. Uh, the first time an import is ran, uh, ServiceNow will check the database to see if that staging table exists. If it's not, it will go ahead and create it based upon the parameters that we've got set here in the data source, and it will then um, load the data that it's pulled um, on the import run into that staging table where it sits and gets ready to be prepared to actually load into the target. So just to show you, um, I'm gonna go ahead and select the name of this table here. And just like I did before, I'm gonna to go to my filter navigator and I'm gonna put the table name dot list to view the contents of that table. And you're going to see that um, ServiceNow is telling us, well, I can't find that table. That table doesn't exist. So we get a little, I guess you'd call it an error message saying this, um, this table's not there. So the reason it's not there is we haven't ran an import yet. So we've specified what we want ServiceNow to create it as, uh, but we haven't ran an import. And so ServiceNow hasn't gone in and actually created that table yet. So that's going to be the next step. Let's run an import and see how our data source works. So go back to our data sources, sys underscore data source, oops. dot list, whoops, if I could type, dot list, I still didn't get it, did I, L-I-S-T, okay, there's our data source that we created in the last note, I'm going to open it up, and you're going to see that once you've got the data source created, um, and you can see we've got our file attached here, which is actually our, our data source we're pulling from an Excel file. You have a couple links down here in the related links area that allows you to test um, your data source and load some data. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Rem if you remember, our little spreadsheet has five rows. ServiceNow gives you an op option here to test load 20 records or load all the records. Um, in the data source. In this case, it doesn't matter because 5 is less than 20. So I'm just going to go ahead and select load all records. Um, ServiceNow is now going to go to the data source. It's actually the first thing it's going to do is it's going to check to see if that staging table is there. It's going to see that it's not. We just proved that. It's going to create it based upon the parameters that we have set in our data source. It's then going to connect to the data source, pull the the rows that we've requested, and then uh, import those rows into 
that uh, new staging table that it created. And when it's all done, we'll get a nice message here that tells us it completed successfully and it shows us that it processed five inserts. Um, it processed five records and it was five inserts into our staging table. So very good. So we're now going to return to our um, data source and I'm going to do what I just did a moment ago but show you this time that now that table has been created. So our import set table named uTest import. I'm going to pop that in here and I'm going to do a dot list on that table and there it is. We now have the table staging table created um, and we have five rows in the table. So the five rows that it that it found in our spreadsheet, it pulled in and it put into our staging table. Real quickly, I'm gonna show you what the staging table looks like, the layout of it. Um, anytime you wanna to get to a table uh, to view the actual structure of the table when you're viewing a list, you can um, click on uh, the hamburger menu of any of the columns and you can go down to configure table and it will actually show you the configuration of that table. So what I really wanted to show you here is, yes, indeed, it did set the label the way we ask it to. It did set the name the way we ask it to. Um, all import set tables or staging tables extend the import set row table. We'll talk about extensions in another note. But what I really wanted to show you was these columns, uh, these are the column list. The columns with the red X are um, custom columns. So they're columns that, that weren't out of the box for the table. And you can see that ServiceNow used that um, uh, our header row uh, to label those table those columns. So you can see we've got an address, a city, a name, a state, and um, let me see how many tables. Yeah, there are 23 rows here. We'll have a zip. We'll have a zip column as well. So uh, ServiceNow used the data that we had set in the data source record to create that staging table and load the five records into that table. So we now have uh, data in our staging table. One more thing I wanted to show you to help understand uh, import sets the staging table. I'm going to go back to the data source. So um, sys data source dot list. I'm going to go into our data source, our test import data source here, and I'm going to run it again. So Let's say now we want to run our import. We're going to run our import a second time. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and do load all records again. You can see now that, that uh, ServiceNow uh, successfully came back with a message saying it was success. It processed five and it inserted five rows. So let's go back and let's look at our import set staging table now. Go here, paste, dot list to see the records. And now we're going to see there are 10 records here. So we've got uh, the five records, but we've loaded them twice. Um, and the, the point I'm making here is that, that it's going to be important for us to be able to manage the records that we load in our staging table based upon um, the import run uh, that was requested. So we actually have 10 um, rows here, but they were actually um, added to the staging table in two separate import runs. We did it the first time we got five, we did it the second time we got five. ServiceNow provides an out-of-the-box table um, that um, allows us to manage uh, the data that's being loaded in our staging table into the runs or the groups that they belong to. And the name of that table is, this is where it gets confusing, the name of that table is import set. And that's why I refer to the staging table as a staging table, not an import set table, because there actually is an import set table. It's an entirely different thing. So let's take a look at the staging now import set table. This is an out of the box table from um, ServiceNow. The name of it is sys underscore import underscore set. I'll do a dot list on that. You're going to see, oops, we have three, and that is because I didn't clear something out. Um, let me see, 825, 826, 826. This one I'm going to get rid of because it was from me experimenting yesterday. 
Sorry, that makes my demonstration a little confusing. But um, if I hadn't clear, if I had cleared that out from yesterday, um, you can see that we have two records here uh, that were executed uh, today, and that was our first import run, which was I set thirty six, and our second import run, which is I set thirty seven. The way this works is whenever you run an import, the first thing ServiceNow does is um, is insert a record into this import set table um, that represents the run or the set of records that are going to be um, inserted into the staging table. So the first time we ran the import, we got this, we inserted this row and we got I set 10036 is, is the number of that. We then loaded those five records into the staging table. As they were loaded into the staging table, they all got a value populated in one of their columns that tied it to this import set run. So I set 36 was the first one. We then went and ran a second import for that same data source. And ServiceNow inserted a second row into this import set table. And it, uh, it has a value of 37 as its number. It then um, went ahead and reloaded the same five rows into the staging table, because that's what we ask it to do. But it marked each of those with um, this second import set reference. It's actually using sysids behind the scenes to make these connections, but talk about that later. So if I go back now to our staging table, let me go to our data source. Back to our data source here. This is our actual staging table what they call an import set table, which confuses me, dot list. The 10 records are here, but you can see there is a set attribute for each of them. And you're going to see that if I sort by that, there's one, two, three, four, five rows that are tied to the 36 run. And there are one, two, three, four, five rows that are tied to the 37 run. So this picture on um, in the note attempts to make that kind of connection. And it took me a little bit to understand the purpose of all this. But the import set out of the box table, each record represents a group or a set of records that were inserted into the staging table. And we can see we have two groups, two records there. And then the actual records in the staging table itself um, have a, a link or reference back to the import set group that they belong to. So in this case, the picture shows three records with the first import run, three records with the second import run. So at this point, we have created our data source record that tells ServiceNow about our source data, how to connect to it, what data we want pulled, how we want the, um, the um, staging table named. We have then tested our data source and we saw that the connection works. We saw that the uh, staging table was created the way we asked for it to be. We saw that the data was loaded into the staging table and we validated that all of that works uh, the way that we expect. So we have data in the staging table. Our next step is to tell ServiceNow, okay, here's how I want you to take this data that we have staged and actually move it into the target table, which will be a, um, an existing uh, table in the ServiceNow platform where we finally want this data to be loaded. Um, and we will be talking about that in the next note. So I'll see you all there.